Hi, welcome in this video about Gypsy Jazz and Gypsy Guitar. This is an English video. This is only my second English video, so I hope you will understand me. I will give you in this video all the tips I know, or the main tips I know, to play this style of music that has been created by Django Reinhardt. On my YouTube channel, there are many playbacks, and they are Gypsy Jazz playbacks. If you want to work on them, there are also different lessons. With this video, there are many documents that you can freely download. MP3, of course, but also tabs, PDF files, many stuffs. It's free, you just have to subscribe on my website, guitarimprovisation.com. And of course, if this video helps you, don't hesitate to donate. Let's get started. Here is the structure of the video. We will start with a short presentation of Gypsy Jazz. And of course, we'll talk a bit about Django Reinhardt. Then we'll speak about the sound and we'll see how to get a good sound from this kind of guitar, gypsy guitars. Then I'll show you how to play La Pompe. La Pompe is the accompaniment that we use in this style of music and that is typical of gypsy jazz. Then I'll talk about right hand and left hand technique. I'll give you many advices to have a proper technique. It's very important in this style of music because we have to play quite loud and if we don't use a proper technique, we can easily injure ourselves. Then we will play our first improvisation on a song called Daphne, which is based on rhythm changes. We'll basically learn a scale, a major scale, and we'll spend some time improvising with this scale. Then we'll see how to improvise on minor swing, which is also a very famous tune in Gypsy Jazz. In this tune, if we want to improvise, we have to learn some arpeggios. So we'll learn to improvise on the arpeggios and to follow the chords of the song. Every time we'll learn an arpeggio or a scale, I'll give you a lot of advices to learn them in a fun way. After that, I will show you some typical licks that I've transcribed from Django Reinhardt solos. There are really a lot of them, so I will only show you the most common ones. Then I will play four studies, improvisation studies that I've created and that are quite easy to play. And of course, I've created this study with typical gypsy licks. And I will finish this video with some more advanced and personal improvisations. Let's start by talking briefly about Gypsy Jazz. Gypsy Jazz, in French, Jazz Manouche, is a style of music created by Django Reinhardt. This style of music was mostly created between the 30s and the 50s. Django Reinhardt was from Belgium and he lived most of his life in France, in Paris, or close to Paris. He developed a very wide, very rich style of playing and style of music and he used this kind of guitars. It's a Selmer guitar, not this one. <laughs> the basic one, basic guitar was Selmer guitar at the time. And most of the guitar that we call guitar manouche or gypsy guitars are inspired, inspired by this kind of, of sound that Django had with Selmer guitar. As this style of music was created by only one guitarist, one musician, Django, we speak a lot about Django, and it can seem a bit weird if you're not used to that. The idea is not to make Django a god, is just to understand how he thought his music and how he managed to make it sound so good, so we can use these ideas for, to, to make our own music, of course. It's very important to listen to a lot of Django's tune, recorded by Django and Stefan Grappelli and all the all the guys that played with his band. And it's not so easy because the quality of the recordings are pretty bad. At the time, they didn't have the, all the stuff that we have to record the music. So it's not so easy to listen when you're not used to old songs, old recordings. So I will give you so, a, a list in the documents that you can download with this video, you will have a list of tunes that are easy and the quality of the recording is pretty good and the playing of Django is, is very good. And I will finish this short presentation by just saying that this style of music is pretty hard to play compared to other style of music. For beginners, when you begin in Gypsy Jazz, 
it requires sometimes some years to get a good tone a good sound from the guitar and to play some stuff that start to sound good compared to blues or rock when when you don't have a good guitar or you it's not so difficult to have a good sound in gypsy jazz it's probably for me it was a bit more difficult Let's speak about the sound. It's very important in this style of music to have a good sound, mostly because this style of music is played acoustic, with acoustic instruments, with a double bass, upright bass, um, acoustic guitar, violin, so it's very important to have a good sound. How can we get a good sound from our guitar? Here are some tips. Let's play a note. So, for example, this note. Put your finger quite firmly on the neck, it's quite important. And we are going to strike the string with the pick pretty firmly too. Of course, I'll exaggerate a bit. What you can try to do is to hit the string too strong and then the you see the, the string buzzes. Then just a bit softer and it's the good uh, strike. This is too strong. This is the limit for this note and for my guitar. For your guitar, it may be different. For example, on this guitar, if I strike pretty hard on the low strings, it will buzz more quickly. So I can't strike so hard. This is the limit. The idea behind this exercise it is to get the maximum volume out of your guitar because it's an acoustic guitar made to resonate a lot. So if you strike like that, you don't have much sound and it's, it's a shame. Here it's much more loud and much more beautiful, I think, because the wood vibrates and everything make, makes the sound good, if my guitar is good, of course. So this is my first tip, try to get the maximum volume and the most beautiful sound from your guitar. It's very important because we play acoustic. I'm going to talk now about the, the right hand technique. The pick, you can hold the pick this way, like that. The hand can be closed or like that, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you have strength in the pick. When you play single notes, when you play la pompe, we will see that the pick can be pretty loose. So the elbow, the arm, the wrist and the hand have to be pretty relaxed when you play. But they have to be relaxed, but you have to put some weight. You have to use the weight of your arm and your hand to, uh, to make the pick pretty heavy when you hit the string. In other parts of the video, I will speak more specifically about right hand and left hand technique. But I will speak now about the picks. We use different kinds of pick in Gypsy Jazz. This one, I like it a lot. I bought it recently. It's Guz, the brand Guz. It's very good. There are some other of the picks that are as good as this one or nearly as good. It's more or less 10 euros, so it's quite expensive for a pick, but usually the sound is very good, to my opinion. I mean, for, for solos. Before I used to play on Dugain, it's made of wood. It's very good to my point of view, but not as good as the one I play uh, with today. It's quite expensive and it's, it doesn't last very long because it's wood. This pick is very famous. It's Dunlop 2 millimeters, and it's rough. It makes a, a good sound. Uh, uh, warm sound and it's cheap is one euro or less than one euro <laughs> so we like it a lot and we usually we use it with th this side of the pick not this one personally I use it to play la pompe I think it has a great sound to play la pompe and you can use thinner picks if you want like one millimeter or a bit more like 1.5 there is a 1.5 I think from Dunlop these are the most famous pick that I've seen. I advise you to try all of these picks 
to see if you're comfortable with them and if you have a good sound, of course. And now let's speak about the guitars. These gypsy guitars are quite expensive because they are acoustic, so it's more difficult to make a gypsy guitar than a solid body guitar, for example, or to get a good sound from this kind of guitar. So they are a good gypsy guitar is between 2,000 and 3,000, sometimes 4,000 euros. Let's say between 2,000 and 3,000 euros, you're pretty sure to have a good guitar. But you can buy a guitar for 500 euros, it can be fine. But if you put 100 euros in a gypsy guitar, you're pretty sure that the sound will be very bad. Now let's see how to play la pompe. La pompe is the accompaniment of this style of music and it's typical of gypsy jazz. La pompe is a rhythmic and harmonic accompaniment. So we have to, to play the tempo. One, two, three, four, one, two, and the chords. Everybody has to hear the chords and the harmony of the tune that we are playing. And not. Here we don't hear any note and we don't hear the chords. So we will do it step by step. Let's start with this chord, with the, which is a very famous chord in Gypsy Jazz. It's A minor 6. I play the A on the low E, 5th fret, and then the fret 4, 5, 5. And the strings A, the A string and the high E string are not played, are not fingered. So what I do, I don't place my hand like that. I place it like that, I grab the neck and place the A minor 6 chord. And these strings that I don't play are muted by the fingers. This way I can play all the strings with the, with the pick. I don't care about the strings. Okay, so this is our chord. Now let's talk about the pick. You have to grab the pick not too firmly when you play la pompe. It has to be loose. And also all this part of the body has to be relaxed. I mean, all the body has to be relaxed, but <laughs> this particularly. When you play la pompe, if someone comes and, and hit your hand, the pick has to go out. If it doesn't, you're probably too tight. In order to play all the quarter notes, one, two, three, the move that we have to do is partially the arm and partially the hand, so the elbow and the wrist. It can be both. If you want to play very fast it will be more the wrist and if you go slow if you want you can do it only with the arm or very fast and it also depends of what you like what's the what's the sound of, what sound do you prefer even if this the difference of sound is quite subtle some people say that you have to use the arm or the end or there are different schools of learning. My point of view is that you have to be able to do everything and to choose what you prefer, what you're most comfortable with. Now that we have the movement at the right hand and the chord. If you want to make it sound like that, you have to be pretty quick, pretty fast. It's not that. So the move has to be quite fast. The, the pick can start like up here, for example, and finish here, because it has to get some speed to hit the strings. And the movement is not just that, it's like that, you know? If you want to get a sound like to and not trrrt, you have to be pretty fast, as I said. Sometimes we can do... We can 
change, of course, but most of the time it's to 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 a fast movement. As you noticed, the chord doesn't last very long. As I finished to play the last E string, I release the pressure at the left hand so that the strings are muted and the sound stops. And I have to do it just after hitting the strings. So it has to be well synchronized. When we play, we don't think, I press, I press the chord, I hit the string, I release. We don't think that. We play the tempo with the left hand, like that. And we try to hit the strings at the same time. So this explanation was pretty slow, but it was step by step and I hope you understand it. Now, how can we make it swing a bit more? Well, in jazz, the two and the four of, the, of one bar are played, are enhanced, are played accentuated. So it's not one, two, three, four. It's one, two, three, four, one, two. If I exaggerate. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You may have noticed that when I play one and three, I don't play all the strings, but only the low strings. It's not essential, but you can do it. It depends. It's, if you want to enhance more the two and the four, you're going to play the one and the three very soft. And when someone plays a solo, and the, the energy goes up, you can accentuate more the two and the four to make it swing a bit more. And the final tip to make it swing even more is this. What I do here is that I make the shabada with the guitar. So this quarter note is an upstroke. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. It's the end of two and four. Now, this is not so easy to do and to, it's not easy to make it swing when you're not used to listening to jazz or to playing jazz. How can you make it work? First, it has to be subtle. It's not. It's much too loud, it's not subtle. It has to be subtle. Then, it has to be muted. So it's when the hand doesn't press on the strings that you make this upstroke. And it has to be laid back. It, it doesn't have to be even or... It's not one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. It's not that, it's just before the three. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. If I exaggerate, it gives that. It's that. So finally, let's play this A minor sixth with La Pompe. I advise you to play with some playbacks, some backing tracks, or some tunes that aren't too fast for you, and which you know the chords, or to go jamming in jam sessions. It's a good way to learn this style of music. What's important when you play La Pompe and when you're accompanying other musicians is to have a steady tempo. It's extremely important. That's the reason why you must play with a metronome or with other tracks and even to make some exercises to check if you're not rushing or, or slowing down and to have a good sound of course if you play too loud or not loud enough or too soft it won't help the guy who's soloing so it's very important having a good sound and steady tempo 
On my website, there are lots of backing tracks, gypsy jazz, play alongs, and also a lot of lessons. Unfortunately, they are in French, so if you don't speak French, it's a shame. But there are many different videos, lessons, entire lessons about La Pompe and all the variations we can do with this, um, this stuff. I didn't speak about the gypsy jazz chords because I don't have time, it's a very long video. But on my website, you can see all this kind of information. Now let's speak about the technique, the right hand and left hand technique. It's important to have a proper technique when playing gypsy jazz, gypsy guitar, because it's pretty difficult to play and it requires some strength. So if we, we don't do things properly, we can easily get injured. Let's speak about the picking hand. The right hand, if you're right-handed, it has to be loose. It's ha it has to be relaxed and you can grab the pick firmly if you play solos or pretty loose if you play la pompe. Now some information about how to strike the string and we'll speak a, a bit about the rest stroke. So, what direction the pick should take when hitting a string? What we sometimes see is that people use rest stroke, we are going to talk about it, and this, they hit the string like that, toward the guitar. If you hit the string toward the guitar, the string will mostly vibrate toward the guitar and out of the guitar. If you hit the string down, the string will vibrate mostly like that, even if it will turn a bit, of course. Huh? So when you hit the string down toward the ground, it will be easier to have a bigger sound. I've already talked about it, but I insist. Now, rest strokes. What's a rest stroke? A rest stroke is when you hit a string and you rest on the string that is down. For example, when I do that, here I rest on the high E string. When I do that, it helps me to have some balance with the hand. I hit the string and I've got a support for my hand. The thing is that when we reach the high E string, we don't have this support. It's not that easy. That's why sometimes people damage their guitar. And that's why I have this plastic stuff here. So to me, the good technique, rest stroke is easy when you start to to solo when you learn to solo, but it's not really the perfect technique. It has to be used in a good way. <laughs> to me, the perfect technique is to have a hand that the, the still position, the resting position is facing the string like that. And the movement when I hit a note is exactly that. I go up a bit, go down hitting the string. I can touch this string, it's not a problem. And my hand doesn't rest on this string. If I do this too much, my hand will tend to fall permanently and it's not so good. In order to work that, you can do this easy exercise. play a note I try to have a good sound to to put my fingers my left fingers firmly on the neck and not to do tag tag every time but like poof poof just like hitting the string and not resting too much on the string that is just below to me it's mostly a question of balance the hand has to stay like that and to hit the string just when necessary and if you do that properly, it will be very easy to go fast. The hand playing fast or slow is the same. And just to finish with the right hand, upstrokes. Usually upstrokes, they can be so loud because we don't have the weight of all this arm and the, the hand. So it's we, we can't have a very good sound when doing upstrokes. So we consider, usually we consider upstrokes like the following movement of the downstroke, like that. 
and you can try this on a string. On a single note, I mean. If I do it slowly, and if an, even if I try, it's difficult to have a good sound when doing upstrokes. But if you want, you can develop this technique or develop a technique that permits that. Now the left hand. The position of the left hand, the best position to me, is a position that is close to the natural position of the hand, which is made for getting stuff. For So if you take the guitar like that, it's more or less a natural position. And we try the best way to avoid problems, body problems and hand problems, is to get close to this position this natural position of getting the neck of the guitar. This will be much more difficult, except if you're used to this position, for example, if you play a lot of classical music. So, this position, when we play a note, it's important to have a lot of pressure on the string. Not too much, not to get hurt, but it's important to be... to put some weight on the string because it will not buzz. Here it buzzes because I don't put a, uh, enough pressure. And also because if you press it pretty hard, it will give a good tone of the note. Talking about the tone, you can use this part of the finger. It's everybody does that. This part of the finger to, to play a note but you can also use this part of the finger. That's what Django used to do, not all the time, but when he plays, he doesn't have the choice. He has two fingers to play. You know, when you do that, you don't have the choice. You can play like that. So you play with this part of the finger, and to me, it gives a bit a warmer sound and a better sound, but it's quite subtle. Anyway, you can try to do it. When doing this, it's not so easy to play fast if you play with this part of the finger. But you can try to do that on, on slow tempo tunes. It can be nice. A good way to think about the sound in guitar is not only thinking about the strike of the note, the stroke of the note, but also the sustain. One note is ta and not ta ta don't, so don't play but play here the sound is sustained i sustain the sound of each note before playing the other note i can change of course but the basic sound is ta so keep the pressure at the left hand after hitting the notes. If you have a good sound and a good guitar, it's a shame not to make the sound last. As we don't like so much the sound of the upstrokes and we like the sound of the downstroke because we can have some strength, some weight, we will try to avoid and to play as much downstroke as possible. For example, when hitting each string, for example, <laughs> Every stroke is a downstroke. If I play two notes per string, it's down up every time. It's pretty easy to do. If I play three notes on each string, time it's down up down if I go down it's a bit more easy because I do down up down down two down strokes going down so it's this is pretty easy this is pretty easy to do it's almost like sweeping it's not if you go fast it's sweeping but if you go slow it's more two down stroke tink tink it's not this 
this is sweeping, this is, I don't know what, <laughs> but it's not exactly sweeping. <laughs> When you are not used to this technique is very strange. When I started to work that, I was used to down up down up all the time. And it's pretty difficult when you learn that. If I go up, I start with the high uh, string. This is difficult because I have to do down up down. I have to go up with the pick and down again. Down up down, down up down, down up down. So you have to work this move. This exercise is very good to work that. So downstrokes and upstrokes is a very important subject in Gypsy Jazz. We talked a lot about it. But to start with, to get comfortable with this technique, you have to work slow. I played this phrase pretty fast, but you have to do it slow and to like five minutes every day, it's very good. Okay, we saw a lot of technical stuff and advices and a lot of speaking. Now we are going to play in the next part of the video. Now let's improvise on the tune Daphne, which is a Django's composition. It's based on rhythm changes in D major. It's pretty fast, we are going to work it slow, of course. All the chords go, they only last two beats, so they go very fast. We are not going to think about the chords, but all of these chords are in D major. Most of these chords are in D major. So what we can do is play a scale that goes with D major, D major scale. <laughs> Here is D major scale. It's important that you learn the scale and that you see that this scale goes with this position of D major. It's D6-9. And this is a very famous gypsy chord. Okay, we are going to improvise on the playback. In this scale, a scale is not made for playing scale. A scale is made for picking notes in this scale to make melodies, to make licks, phrases, whatever you want. So that's what we are going to do. Just a few notes, very few notes, with a good sound of course, in the scale and in the tempo it's extremely important. If you don't play in the tempo, you can play. <laughs> so we have to hear the beat and play in the beat. Here is the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I try to play notes on this beat. Okay, it doesn't sound awesome, but it's pretty simple and it's extremely important to be able to do that. If you are not able to play in the, in the time, don't work complicated licks, it's worthless. Okay, if you're able to do that, great. We can vary a bit our rhythms. We can play on the beat, we can breathe, in French we say breathe, but stop playing and also play um, eighth notes with upstrokes. This 
start to sound a bit better. It's not that easy because you have to, to deal with picking issues and also rhythm issues. The eighth note is not ta 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 because it swings, so it's ta 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 pa pa da da ta ta da da ta 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 If you want to make it sound even better, we can try to think of phrases, of licks, I don't know how to say in English, phrases probably, a group of six, seven notes, not just ta ta ta, ta ta, not notes that we pick in the scale randomly, but we try to have some idea of a phrase like da 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 da, ooh, da 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 whatever it can be just a vague idea of what we can do but we try to play several notes in a in one time this is a phrase i stop to play and then And of course, I can try, I can work this, I can do this exercise without any backing track. It's much better, I have the time to choose the notes, and then I do it on the backing track. that I cheated a bit, I used some stuff that we are going to see in the next parts of the video. However, it's very important to spend a lot of time doing this exercise. Simple phrases on the tempo with a good sound. Please don't make the mistake to work a lot and to spend a lot of time on playing fast. If the melodies that you play are not interesting, you can play so slow or fast doesn't matter, it will never sound good. But if you know how to play melodies, slow melodies sound beautiful, then playing fast is just a technical exercise. Daphne is a tune that looks like so what, but it's in major. So it's D major during 16 measure, I think. Then eight measure of eight measures of E flat major. So the same thing, but just one fret higher. And then we go down to D major. It's A, A, B, A. The structure of the song is A, A, B, A. Now let's play on minor swing, which is also a Django's tune, very famous, probably the most famous gypsy jazz tune. It's based mostly on three chords, and the chords last long, two bars for each chord. It's in A minor, there's A minor, D minor, and E7. Anyway, as the chords last long, we will try to adapt our notes in our improvisation to the chords that is played in the accompaniment. So we will have to know where the tones of each chord is located on the neck. That's what we call chord tones or guide tones in English. So if you understand well, on the previous part of the video I showed you a scale to improvise on and here I will show you some chord tone. Usually in Gypsy Jazz we spend more time working chord tones. To me it depends of the, of the tune we are playing. For example for Daphne it's very important to know the major scale much more than any arpeggio, any chord tones. 
And that's why I, I chose Daphne on the previous video and minor swing for this video, because we are going to see chord tones. Let's start with A minor 6. Here are the notes of A minor 6. A, C, E, N, F sharp. It's pretty difficult to play and usually in gypsy jazz we prefer to play like play it like that. For this kind of chord it's a bit easier and it's this way Django played because he had two fingers. But for the moment let's stay in this part of the neck. D minor now. The D minor 6 can be played like that. Or even like that. But here is the D, uh, classical D minor. This is D minor 6. D, F, A and B. And now E7. Usually we play it like that with the 9, the major 9, or just like that, or even with the low B. E7 is played melodically like that. So the first thing to do is to learn this chord tones, these arpeggios, at the same place of the neck, that's what we did, to learn them by heart and to play them and to start to improvise with them without any tempo, so very slowly, and in the order of the chords that you can hear in minor swing. It's A, D, E, A, D, A, E, A. So A minor. D minor, E7, A, D minor, A minor, E7, and A minor. Now that we know the arpeggios, we can try to play them in the tempo and at the right time. So there will be a playback, I will play on the, on the backing track of Minor Swing, a slow backing track. I will tell the names of the chords and I will play the right notes. To make it simple, what we can do is just choose two strings, like the G and the B string, and play the notes, the chord tones of each chord, but only on these two strings. So for A minor 6, it's these three notes. For D minor 6. And for E7, there is also a B flat 7 in the in the chords of minor swing, but it's quite the same as E7. It's a... Uh, anyway, so we can just say that B flat 7 is just like E7. It sounds almost the same. To begin with, we'll say the name of the chord. A minor. D. E7. A minor.
Okay, this exercise is extremely important to me because you play in the tempo, you get used to playing in the tempo, to playing the right notes at the right moment, and also to memorize the order of the chords. Playing this on only two strings forces you to know the arpeggios without starting by, by the first note, the lowest note. And also you can see where the, for example, with where this note of A minor goes for D minor. It goes here, this note goes here for E7, etc. So you see how the notes, the chord tones moves from one chord to the other. If you are having troubles memorizing the order of the chords or feeling the, the pulse and the measures, the group of two measures, what you can do is just play la pompe with the playback. And you can make different exercises to feel the measure, for example, use your feet to just tap the one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It will help you feeling the measure. You can do it for, for example, every two measures, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because this is where the, the chord changes. What's really nice with this exercise, I think, it's that you're changing notes and it goes very well with the backing track, and that's, that's nice. <laughs> but we can make it sound much better. For example, what we can do is get out of the chord tones and getting back or using chromaticism, for example. When I'm on M A minor, I have these two notes on the top E string and I can do that if I want. I go from one note to the other by all the notes that are here and I can do it down. Or I can also just try one note, get out of a chord tone and get back. For example, I just did, and I came back on this chord tone, which is in A minor. I can do, and I can do some more risky stuff also. I am going to do that on the tempo, on the same backing track, but before that, what you can do to work these phrases, to try to find some nice phrases, nice licks to play, you can just do it without any backing track. You have the time to create the phrases and to see how the notes move around the chord tones. Let's do it very slowly, on A minor 6, of course. <laughs> This note works very well with A minor. This is very nice. A chromaticism with this note each time. There are thousands of nice licks that I can do and that I can create. I suggest you to do that by your own without any backing track. Now let's do it with the backing track. I can spend my life doing it, it's great. 
I suggest you to spend a lot of time doing that. So what did we do in this part of the video? We learned arpeggios or chord tones to make our improvisation and our notes sound good with the chord of minor swing. So what you have to do if you want to be able to play on different tunes is you have to know your scale, your arpeggios for minor chords but also major, seven, diminished. There are different types of chord that you have to learn to, to get to be comfortable and to be able to play on different tunes. And this is a big amount of work. So take your time and try as quickly as possible to have fun when you play instead of learning all the scales, all the arpeggios, and then you can have fun. Let's talk about Django's sounds and licks. It is part of the learning of Gypsy Jazz to learn some phrases, some licks from Django Reinhardt. So it's important to transcribe what he did. I transcribed a lot of solos, more than 50 solos and with the accompaniment to understand what's in his mind when he plays. And that's what that the, the key of the working the phrases of Django Reinhardt. The main goal is not to play them different times in one solo. The main goal is to understand what sounds good in every lick and then to use it to the way you like it. There are a lot of licks that are typical from Django's playing, so I will only give you the main ones, the most famous ones, and the one that he plays the most. And I will tell you when exactly you can hear them. And some of them are extremely used, so I will only give a, you a few references, but with the exact second second of the of the tune. So here is a very small phrase that he does a lot. It's extremely short. It's like a piece of lick. So this is the lick. If I do it with all my fingers, I can do it with a slide or just like that. Or I can even play all the notes. And ending with an upstroke. This is a triplet. And I can do it down, of course. And for every note, I can use slide, hammer on, pull off. But of course, when I strike the string again, it will make it ring again. And so the sound will be a bit bigger and probably better. What's really typical in Django's sound because he had only two fingers to play melodies. What he did is he used a lot of slides at the left hand, but he strike again at the right hand like that. And he did it very fast like. And this is a very typical sound of Django. It's and you don't have there's only one way to do it. You have to to make a slide and strike again the, the string at the at the right moment. So that's why many people just play, uh, for some, some phrases, they just play with two fingers, even if they have five available. So this phrase is basically a triplet, a chromaticism with a triplet. Another phrase is that looks the same, which is more like an enclosure. So I go around this note, I go up, down, and I come back to this one. And I start with a ham hammer on. But I can play all the notes. It's not really good because at the second, second beat, I go up and this is not so good. This is better. This is used a lot and this is used mainly the way I play it with a triplet and a hammer on, but also like that. 
So no effect, no hammer on on the first note, but a pull off on the second one. And this is no longer a triplet, this is an eighth note and then two sixteenths notes. You have this phrase on the beginning of the minor swing solo, which is probably the most famous. I do it again slowly. So he goes around this note with this one and this one. These were very small phrases. Now, longer phrases. There is an idea that he uses a lot, that Django uses a lot, is it's that. It probably looks a bit impressive, but it's quite easy to do, and the idea is very simple. He plays every tone of an easy chord, like A minor. And for every note, he goes one half step below and he goes on the notes. So he doesn't play that, he plays. And this for every note. He anticipates every note by the note just below. So when you do that, you have to aim at this note and not think too much about this one. And it's very easy to play because there are two notes per string, two or four notes per string. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. There is no down, down. And you can do it on every chord, for example, a D major chord. There is a melody of a tune based on this effect. It's called Appel Indirect. You can also hear this phrase in body and soul, for example. Here, Django plays it with hammer on, legato. He doesn't strike the string again. And he plays C minor going up and then C major. goes again on C major. Another phrase now, probably the most famous phrase of Django, or oh, it's not really a phrase, it's because he created a lot of phrases based on this ID. It's more like a shape that he uses a lot. It's that. So here basically it's an A minor with the six. and he can go up. He doesn't do it so much, what he does, he, sometimes he does that. Anyway, before I show you some moments, some songs where he uses it, what's interesting and what's important is to see where you can use this shape. On A minor, it's kind of easy. It, it fits perfectly with the chord, but for D major, for example, you can play it here because some notes like this one doesn't go with the, the D major scale. What you can do, for example, is play it here. But you have to know this shape, of course, and this one doesn't go with D major, so you have to do. And then this one, if you quickly go to some other notes of D major, this works. Django uses this phrase many times, for example in blues clair at the sixth measure. It's on an F7 with the nine here, the ninth. He also uses it in I love you at the thirteenth measure of his chorus and he uses it with the sweeping.
and also in coquette at the fourth measure. What's interesting with these licks is to learn them, of course, and to try to incorporate them in your improvisations. So you have to know them well and to know where you can and when you can play them and try to play them as much as possible. With the time, you will learn to play them just, just sometimes and just the way you hear them. Now let's improvise on D major and try to incorporate these licks. Now I will play four studies that I've created for you to work on a precise exercise. What I suggest you to do is to pick the one that you prefer and that is the good level for you, not too hard, not too easy. They are kind of easy, easy studies. You pick the one you prefer and you work this study during a few weeks to master the study and to play the study a lot so much that the phrases of the study will come up when you're improvised. The easy study on Daphne. study a bit more difficult on Daphne. The easy study on minor swing. and a study a bit more difficult on minor swing. To finish this video, I will do two improvisations on minor swing and Daphne, and it's a bit faster than the playback we've worked on.
I hope that you enjoyed this video, that it helped you to get better on guitar, playing gypsy jazz, that it helped you to get more fun by playing this music. Don't hesitate to spend hours playing on backing tracks, playing in jam sessions also and with your band of course. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Facebook page, it will support me. You can also donate money if you want.